Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, as always, we want to invite you to come and join us over on Patreon. Uh, every video, every single video goes up on Patreon. Uh, so if you are following us on uh, YouTube, you can catch everything from here. And you could ask, uh, go ahead and hit the notification button. Uh, if you do want to become part of the paid membership tier, it starts at just a dollar a month again. And if you pay in advance, um, you get a 10% discount. So it ends up being three cents a day, basically, like 2.96 cents a day, uh, literally. And it does support the channel. So we want to thank you guys for that. Um, they're, they keep leaking these type of things out and w this is a, a, a disclosure absolutely of sorts. As we see, it appears that rogue planets, free floating worlds that aren't gravitationally bound to a parent star might be more common than we thought. New data from the James Webb Space Telescope has revealed 540, yes, 540, that they can see that they are sharing with us. Planetary mass objects in the Orion Nebula and Trapezium Cluster within the large group of rogue planets are 42 pairs of planets that are gravitationally bound together, something that's never been observed before. <clears throat> and so they call them Jupiter mass binary objects or jumbos. It's a nice, nice little name for it. So, I mean, what, what, what do we get when we uh, think about uh, Zechariah Sitchin and his, you know, his series of books about Nibiru, the rogue planet, right? And rogue planets are a reality. Now, one of the things that I think is, is something that comes out in certain like fundamentalist circles is the notion that everything about the Anunnaki and ancient Sumeria is is all about Zechariah Sitchin. It couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, you know, if you look at the Sumerian writings that we have, the number of Sumer Sumerian cuneiform writings, uh, absolutely, it it vastly overwhelms what we have of a biblical origin of, say, you know, if you're looking for anything biblical pre, say, 300 A.D., there's way more, way more. Sumerian cuneiform writings. I mean, it's not even close. Uh, you know, the, what you have biblically is in a thimble compared to in an ocean. There's just so much more. The problem was they weren't uh, translated until we got the Rosetta Stone, and that's exactly why that is a term now for translation, Rosetta Stone. Well, you know, it literally was Rosetta Stone because we could read Greek, but we didn't know what the Sumerian writings were. We didn't know what the Egyptian writings were. Uh, and it, it's fascinating to even uh, study our ancient history because in some ways it feels like it starts in Greece in our Western mindset. But when you look closely, you see that you know Greece led to Rome, but Greece was really... It was predated by the Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian uh, area dominance upon the planet. And that was all about basically the bringing here of the system that we, we are now in. And many are starting to realize it when, you know, that term prison planet first came about. You know, there's truth in that. There's strong truth in that. You know, there, there, there really is when we're looking at a prison planet. I mean, where, where do the bars start to, <laughs> where do the bars start to grow? And it starts to grow the second you put your child in preschool. But we don't know that. We feel we're sending them to school to give them opportunity, to give them benefit, to give them options. We're sending them to school, but they're really just coloring our child in putting our child inside of certain bars inside of certain lines so i think you know anyone who who's sending their child to preschool for enrichment i, I think that's n wonderful and that's nice but keep in mind you're also limiting them because they're gonna show them the rules of the 3d matrix the Sumerians and their system uh, is very, very interesting, uh, really, when you when you look at the history of things. And it, it really is all about Mesopotamia. And again, this is a central uh, situated landmass area. 
when you look to earth uh, from above and you're looking down, if you were first going to pick a spot to kind of dominate in order to take over a planet, have any of you guys ever played Risk? Have you ever played Risk, right? Risk was a game where it was all about strategically outlaying uh, the countries that you want to uh, start your world conquest from. And, you know, what area would be more key uh, than, say, this area? Because it would allow you to move up into Europe. You can move over into Africa. You can move up into uh, Siberia, Russia, and move over into Southeast Asia. From there, you could go into Australia. Again, you know, the way that the land masses are situated, this is a key area to control and to start to build your empire from. But, you know, it was absolutely, when we're talking about the Anunnaki Draconian uh, Empire, it, it was a global empire. It just, you know, it didn't start out quite that way. It was really uh, a central spot as what they were searching for. Yet, we get from modern science that it, there is an out-of-Africa uh, evolution to Homo sapiens sapiens. And, you know, again, we see contradictory and conflicting evidence of uh, different proto-humans all over there were two different versions of homo erectus for instance one homo erectus seemed to evolve on its own somewhere over in china another uh, grouping of the same in africa and the reality is you know there have been a lot of genetic experiments going on that on this planet for a very very long time as you know you see this depiction of humans, we're the little guys, and the giants. Now, many will point to the book of Enoch and say, see, that's the truth. The book of Enoch was kicked out of the Bible. It was never included in the Bible purposely. You get a little bit of Genesis 6, which touches on giants and talk, touches on mighty men of old, men of renown, and these offspring. And then when you get to the book of Enoch, you read of these beings that came down and, and created hybrids and did all sorts of atrocities, literally mated with humans. Now, it feels like there might be an issue in mating just looking from the size difference here. Uh, small a, a small issue. I mean, I, I don't know if it would be survivable for the females uh, or even possible. But, you know, again, when we're talking about taking DNA and creating something in a lab... Oh, well, that changes everything. Because if the DNA is compatible, that, that makes it a go. Doesn't matter what size of the apparatus or, you know, going down that route. That's not what we're really... And in fact, that's not really what, what is alluded to there. Because when you read it, it really does seem like it's all about a test tube uh, sort of beginnings for Homo sapiens sapiens. And... Many, many have, have wondered, why is it apparently 97% of our genome is turned off? Turned off. It's like our operating system has the bare minimum allowable to function. Well, again, it goes along with these stories because they needed a, a slave worker species. And again, this is not all on Zechariah Sitchin. You could take him out of the picture and and you would still have the same thing being said from, from you know, basically stories that are repeated almost verbatim time and time again. Many different sources, many different people translating now at this time and, and point in time. And we're still finding more and more of these uh, scripts. And they were written to last. They were written to last. So, you know, when you think of the Sumerian kings list, it really brings up a problem. Uh, because how can you rec reconcile the fact of the time frames? You, you have, and this is, by the way, the Stella that we first found that has the Sumerian kings list on it. How do you reconcile kings ruling for tens of thousands of years? How could you possibly reconcile it? Well, as we've talked about with the cycle of the yugas, 
uh, the time that humans live the shortest is, is basically during the Dark Age. And so much of the reason why humans live such short lives in this time period during a Dark Age and the beginning and ending of Bronze Ages is because the system makes it that way. Humans are intentionally manipulated to have a very, very short lifespan because if they were to have a lifespan that was two, three, four, five, ten times longer, they would figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot to be given away when you actually start to ask questions and I think that's where the control structure gets nervous and that's why they need so desperately to have a belief system and they need so desperately to have an educational system so that they can ask the questions and give the answers and nobody's standing back saying well what about that because because you know as long as they get that covered nobody's really going to question anything else question the narrative unless you start to activate the rest of your energetic DNA so when that stuff gets activated you can start to see the little cracks in their story you can start to see other lines and modalities of information and you do start to ask the, the tougher questions that otherwise people just fresh out, out of the education system they're not going to ask because well they've already been told Yes, absolutely. You know, and it, there is obviously a whitewashing of our real history that's constantly going on. And so it gets very, very dif difficult to truly piece together how things are. How can you? Uh, and, and people will say, show me the evidence. Show me the evidence about everything that you're speaking about. Well, you could, you know, research this yourself as I'm always on the lookout for uh, new books that, are going to be legitimate and not books that are put out again by people that are in the system and when you find those you'll find that they're like one to three hundred dollars for a book and they're very hard to come by and and you know they're in limited qua quality uh, quantities purposely because they don't want people having anything but an official version of things again the most by far the most printed book ever is the bible it's the most printed book ever by a landslide it's not even close N number two is the complete works of mao and number three is the koran these are obviously control uh control manifestos of the system this is that's all about giving you a story to get you to follow along with it and, you know, by the way, when you look to what Netanyahu is saying today now, he's, he's saying, well, we're, we're going into Gaza. We're going to kind of clean it up in his version of cleaning things up. And then we're staying. We're going to police it. It's it's uh, he's he's not getting out. He's not doing a two state solution. Why? Because they need to have us. The real controllers need to have us constantly fighting ourselves. It's Genesis 11, right in our face. The real controllers are still there. What the real controllers found is that when humans are knowing slaves, they're not very productive. No. <laughs> We're just kind of... Uh asking around about that last night and seeing what information would come in and you know and w without getting into any other debates i mean that was one of the basic things that was learned in the very beginning when creating humans for slaves uh that was the hard way and do we not all learn the best doing things the hard way and the sad part about that was is, is when creating humans and the um, the Anunnaki gods will call them just for the purpose of understanding that they have more knowledge not because they are better or higher uh, trying to get these humans that they created through their CRISPR technologies um, trying to force them to do things was kind of like you know pedaling backwards trying to go uphill you know but they were going to try anyway because they didn't know anybody they just wanted slaves and they just pointed and they wanted them to do things and if they didn't well they would brutalize them they would beat them they would hurt them and they learned very quickly that this was this was a lot of effort it's a lot of effort to try to force people to do stuff 
And then if you hurt one, well, you have to deal with that too. You know, for them, it's they're, they're just dealing with cattle. They're just dealing with something. Oh, that one's got a broken leg. Okay, get rid of it. And that in the very, very beginning, in the very raw form of all this process, when it started, it was very brutal like that. Absolutely. So when we look to like the Sumerian king's list, what does it say again? It, it says that after the kingship descended from heaven not talking dimensionality necessarily what we're really talking about is again uh the conquerors coming down taking over a planet and then setting up rulership on the planet you know this is the reality earth is a prison planet and they view all of us as their slaves they found that when they rule with a whip, which there's depictions of them whipping humans, we were showing uh, them stepping on humans, with that, and there's been many uh, different depictions of humans uh, in chain gangs, you know, going back five, six thousand years or, or more. Humans are not productive. They're not productive. So let them think that they are ruling themselves. Let's see how that goes. So they remove themselves from the planet they put in their stead their hybrid offspring so to speak again when you look to the nephilim if you really want to equate it the nephilim uh they are basically these anunnaki and their offspring and and the rub is that when you talk about jehovah which jehovah is the latinized version of the hebrew yehoah which is one of the vocalizations of, of the Tetragrammaton, uh, Yahweh, you know, that is a Nephilim. So, <laughs> you, know, you know, the the, the the rub, the irony of it all is if you are obeying uh, who they give you as the God of the Old Testament, you're literally serving Satan. That's the rub. They got you coming. They got you going. When you view it, from their perspective that they want you to view it from what's your purpose well what's what why did allah create humans to serve him allah it, it really does the origin of the root comes from elohim again mighty ones which is a reference again to the anunnaki so yeah the anunnaki believe you are slaves and that's what islam is basically saying islam means to submit to submit to who to the Anunnaki. That's the reality. To Allah. To Elohim. Just submit that you are a slave and and do the the will of the draconian system. As you know, again, Jehovah Yahweh is one of them too. So when people talk about the fallen angels and they don't realize that they're actually serving the fallen angels. And and that's the biggest irony of it all. Mike and I, we always talk about a spiritual practice and there's so many reasons to have a spiritual practice. And, and one is because, you know, if you, uh, if something happens in your life and, and the world falls out from underneath you, you, you can fall back on yourself just like a bird is not afraid if he's, if he's perched on a, on a, on a tree limb and the tree limb falls, the bird can fall back on his wings. So that's a really good reason to have a spiritual practice. But the other reason to have a spiritual practice is this really helps you to uh, melt away the BS indoctrination that we are given from birth. <laughs> so you can see past everything. So we stop falling for this line of stuff that they continue to give us, which is really a headache. But uh, and they really discourage that spiritual practice. They make people afraid of the spiritual practice. And it's because like at this point in our lives with the, you know, the uh, modern everything that we have, they have people so afraid of, of something spiritual. Oh, my gosh, you're, you're messing with demons. And there is a good reason for that. It's like they really did very well covering their bases. But guess what? We are pushing past that because nature finds a way to bring itself back to perfection. And we're on the way. Absolutely. Again, after kingship had descended from the heavens, Eridu became the seat of kingship. And 
Eridu Anolulim reigned 28,800 years as king. And then you have another one, Alalgar reigned 36,000 years. Two kings, 64,800 years. And again, it's a byproduct of the age that we're in, along with, you know, the technology involved and who these beings were, because again, they were of um, more of their bloodline, you know, so to speak. So, you know, again, it, it's written that a day to the Lord is as if a thousand years. And, and instead of saying Lord, uh, a day to the Anunnaki is as, as if a thousand years in a thousand years as if a day so you know if they left out they were out in the open at one point in time if, if they've been gone for almost 3,000 years visibly maybe 2,500 you know visibly because when you look to it too all these uh there's there's this whole wellspring of information that starts flowing in in a new systematic way about 2,500 years ago around 500 bc uh, you see there's there's a lot of different things happening with thought and philosophy uh, around that time period. And, you know, again, we, we do see in more modern times, I would say around 1860, 1880, um, there was another influx of a new way of thinking coming in. Th this happens like around the turning points of the ages, so to speak where you know certain beings will incarnate uh some beings of of a good order and really trying to help free humanity from its bonds and and other beings uh, uh, that are theirs that are trying to give you a little apparent light but then bring you down into the darkness deeper so you know when you look at it five cities eight kings 241,200 years and people will say, well, that's that's a different year. That's a different, you know, m unit of measurement. But the reality is there's nothing that shows that it's a different unit of measurement. And in reality, what we're looking at is, is, is just the fact that certain beings lived much longer lives. And in fact, you know, right now, they're going to be introducing all sorts of technology. They, they're using different strategies. They're still there. They've always been there. But again, they found humans are way more productive when they think they're actually running themselves. <laughs> yeah. But it's not the case. <laughs> that is so true. I mean, if, if you know, you put someone in a, a store and you show them all of these items they can have, they're of course they're going to go straight to the items and then they're going to feel like they're in control of their life because they picked out all of these things for themselves to to bring home and they're going to operate their life in in that way but if you could imagine this world is so much more than a department store there's so many more options out there and i gotta comment something a little bit about bloodlines you know when it comes to these beings coming down and uh, putting their bloodlines into different humans, they can count on that human to do things the way they want them to do things. I mean, we can look at <clears throat> Dobermans are a great example, their bloodline. What are they created for? These dogs were created to protect the tax man <laughs> for, for very good reason. And now they are really they're bred to be watchdogs and Sita is the best watchdog she goes out there and she does her watchdogging and she's just in her form she is flying she is happy she is being everything she can be when she's watchdogging she's wonderful and the other thing these dogs can do is they're they're super precious in the sense that they are very affectionate so they're emotional support dogs which I didn't expect that out of them I just knew that we could use some good protection and they definitely brought that but they also brought the emotional aspect to it so they were bred and the bloodlines go from doberman to doberman so you can pretty much bet when you get a doberman you're going to get a big love bug and you're also going to get a lot of protection so that's how bloodlines work it's like you kind of know what you're getting when you insert certain blood into certain beings and that's how they take people they breed them and then they put them in a place of power because you know, they know that they're going to do that thing for them. So they all remain in power. And again, 
it, there's so many depictions of these giant be beings and you know giants are a very touchy topic uh when you look <laughs> when you have youtube experience because we've had videos demonetized even taken down when it's like why did they take that down all we're doing is talking about giants you know and again they they need to kind of cover their tracks when you talk deep state uh yeah it's really deep it's off planet this is the reality again when you look to all the clouds and everything it's all frequency control we see evidence of ships and and we've shown this so many times in other videos we'll keep revisiting them but again you'll have depictions medieval artwork showing the birth of christ the, the crucifixion of christ these type of things and there'll be ufos and there'll be uh you know people manning these these ships clear ships and then there's depictions of angels too because again these were never fallen angels no an angel is a, is a non-physical being in a higher density and you know these beings these beings were never angels of of that sort in any dealings that we've had with them they've been basically uh truly uh they're just worker bees and soldiers themselves in a much bigger control system and again they are nothing but pawns for the draco who again are the ones that created the artificial intelligence that enslaved them so uh, ultimately yes satan truly is ai and it's ai on a on a <laughs> a uh, galactic level it, it's an ai that's not human created and everything that we see that appears to be created by humans is just things that have been allowed by the control system to progress in a orderly way so it's not like oh look what we've achieved no it's 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 look what they've leaked into us now so to speak <laughs> what do they want us to do with this and and again uh, when we look to the ancient texts that talk about the wars of the gods, you know, that's when there there was literal battles over our heads. And that time will be coming again as as, you know, this in this era is is coming to an end. When you look at UBI, universal basic income, when you look at you will own nothing and be happy, what they're saying is we're going back to the time period we realize uh, the time period of the real controllers staying in the shadows is ending because humanity's awakening and humanity is going to figure out what's going on. So what do they have to do? They have to control the narrative and they will use a good cop, bad cop narrative. And, and that's like the oldest playbook that there is. But they're already doing it. And I see so many authors that buy right into it, even the people that are trying to expose the system buy right into it and say, wow, that Enki guy, he's just so nice and Enlil's such a butthead. And this is exactly what they're going to do. And it's so obvious, you know, that they will give to us, hey, you know, the Anunnaki legends, well, you know, it is real. Here's one. <laughs> Elon will probably be the person that introduces them to us as Elon himself is is is, is basically uh, one of them uh, like a, the way that Cindy describes him he's an EGG love child yes. that is literally what what Elon is and so his 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 real purpose is going to be to be an ambassador Elon is to be the bridge space x nibiru planet of the cross sing Oh, Christ on the cross. It's all been in front of our face. Yeshua came to teach humanity that, you know what? You've been enslaved by an extraterrestrial species. Now, they say that they're your creator, but they're not your creator. Because, you know, they are the manipulator of the genome. And, you know, from that they say that they are the creator. But you are bornless. You you have always been the the real you because the body again is, is just a vehicle for the for the consciousness which cannot be destroyed and it's hilarious again that they throw out there the concept of hellfire and you know fearing the one that can destroy both body and spirit by throwing it into the lake of fire y yeah you know when you are out of body on fourth density you don't feel heat. This is something that if you, uh, you know, if humans would go ahead and work on themselves truly spiritually, you would realize this through deep meditation. 
and being able to astrally project and leave the body. Uh, again, that's part of the physical sensation uh, that doesn't have any uh, control over us. So no, they can't throw you into a lake of fire where you're going to be basically a human barbecue forever. But you can go through a portal. You can go through the sun and, and come out in a different star system, say Sirius, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. That part's true. And you can then incarnate on another planet. As, you know, again, we've had so many different lives, most of us have had thousands of lives, thousands of incarnations. What they try to do is they try to keep you in a low enough frequency where you're going to come right back into their control grid. <clears throat> right, so you're going to be born right back into the 3D matrix if you're not ready to, to break out of it. But uh, this time is so very important because people are waking up. They're understanding that there is so much more and they are going out there and they're learning things like qigong they're learning things like yoga they're learning things like meditation and this makes the controllers very 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 nervous they don't want people doing that but they have to give the illusion like they are allowing people this uh, freedom to explore themselves but as you can see as the ai kind of creeps in it's like everyone's going to have a chip in their body and every breath that they take and every step they make it's all going to be logged so that it goes on your it goes on your you know your purchase book for the month so if you take too many breaths or too many steps you're not going to be able to buy a gallon of milk at the end of the month they're just going to have control over everything and i gotta tell you i had this horrible nightmare last night i mean it was awful about uh, there was like, so I'll try to explain it best I can. There was like this Chinese type of building that everyone was in. And the only thing that you could do is like you could walk from one room to the next room back to the other room. But the only thing you were allowed to do in, in this one room was you had to sit there and stand there and you had to paint this red X. And that was like, that was your movement for that time and that was your job and that was your purpose and then when we were in the other room it's like we had oh so much freedom to like lay there and read a book you know until it was time to go back and do your job and paint the red x and that really disturbed me that really bothered me and i am having more uh, visions and dreams lately that that are you bugging me tell them what you you saw yourself as <clears throat> right and, and there was at one point in the dream i was walking through a corridor and i looked up and i saw myself in the mirror and i was a, a chinese uh person and the horrible part about it is i had this huge cancer growth on the left side of my face there was like this big bump looked like i had like a walnut in my cheek or something but you could tell it was obviously cancer because it was all purple and red and it was inflamed and i didn't have anything in my mouth so the only thing that bump could have come from and it was painful would have been some some form of cancer so this was just a horrible dream and and i think for those who are who are <clears throat> wanting to not be in a system like this just continue to walk into the line and sight of freedom and we will definitely get there and this brings me really quick and i'll give you back to mike but um the when he said the bornless and the wombless which which the wombless one of our clients coined for me is like so significant because coming through the womb <clears throat> out of the womb is significant that's like the source spark of the all and it just really feels like what is being peddled now is to make sure that the beings coming into this world do not go through the womb they do not go through the stargate a woman's womb is a stargate it takes you from one world to another world i mean it's so sacred and it is so beautiful but anymore it, it's just not celebrated in fact it's being toxified like it's a bad thing and you know they're hooking women up to all kind of things to have them give birth with all all kind of stuff around them and and used to be such an easy but sacred experience sacred and it's just not like that anymore and it's changing and i don't like that and i'm gonna just walk in a different direction i'm not gonna keep going down this ai road <clears throat> no and there's the whole tartaria again um 
Watch mine unveiled if you ever want to deep dive. I mean, you know, those two kids are um, amazing with the videos they put together. And I mean, they've even done like a 13 hour video once because, you know, I've, I've felt like, you know, shoot, sometimes we could go off on these tangents, especially I could go off on exposing everything about the Bible and, and the Koran. And it literally, I could, it'd be all every waking hour I'm awake easily. I, I mean, I wouldn't stop for days. And they actually um, do that <laughs> sometimes on these tangents. And it's true. I mean, that whole notion of cabbage patch babies and things and orphanages and going all the way back to babies and in incubators, you know, and at, at, at like world's fairs and stuff. The human population is cold on a regular basis. And then there's a new version that's modified and more of the genome is, is shut off to make us more pliable. And yet our own spirits and source and the creator of this universe through light, again, through light coming from the sun is turning on our DNA. So as much as they keep shutting it off, uh, the real creator, the real God with the big G is constantly turning it back on through the sun. This is why they, they are plastering the sky's number one reason. Sure, there's other reasons too, because there's aluminum and barium lead to Alzheimer's, lead to cognitive difficulties, shortened lifespans. Uh, there's other things in the uh, you know clouds as well. But it is primarily about keeping us away from the light. When we look to these giants, they are truly like vampires. They are truly like vampires that feed off the life force of others. And they also don't like the light. You know, this is another big reveal. They don't like the light because, you know, they can't handle the light because it's too intense for them. So this is why they are creatures of darkness. And again, King Charles is related to the real Dracula. You know, they are blood relations. As, you know, I was looking at a depiction of Charles on the crown again. There's that kingship from on high kingship from on high yeah it's it's the controllers and it isn't it the, the most ironic thing in the world that those that are so fearful of satan lucifer and again lucifer means light bringer and again there's only one spot in the entire bible that speaks of lucifer and and it was a mistranslation and and people can't get it through their minds because of their indoctrination uh, that and what they want to do is is the association that they want to avoid is light with goodness. So they want you to think of light with darkness. And you know, here you have uh, Charles sitting on his throne, uh, a representative of the Anunnaki. This is who he is. All this pomp and circumstance. Why do you think the Pope has any power at all? Because Again, the religion is created by them. The, the kingship comes from them. Uh, and all the Abrahamic traditions come from them. And they have distorted other uh, traditions as well. As we see, anytime something good comes, anytime a true light worker comes, the teachings are perverted. And so, again, Yeshua's mission was to say, guys, wake up. You're in this slave system. When he said, I and the Father are one, he's saying to you, self-realization 101, that source is in you. You don't need anything. You don't need any king. You don't need any church. You don't need any um, mosque. You know, again, the real temple is you. You yourself are the real temple. You don't need anything else. No dogma. Dogma divides. And right now, as we know, you got pro-Israel and you got pro-Palestine. This is how they sit back and laugh and watch us kill ourselves. It's so, so perverse. It really, truly is demonic. And again, the biggest rub is every time somebody's worshiping Jehovah, Allah, uh, Yahweh, you're giving power to the system. And that's where sometimes we just need to turn and look at kittens. We just need to turn our attention and our heart chakra and look at a super cute kitten that's in a, a beautiful cherry looking type of tree that's in full bloom. And I just can't get enough of looking at this. I mean, this is like 
cuteness overload. This is so beautiful. I mean, it almost like just washes all the yuck away after you have to walk through the mud bog. And you just look at this little kitten. Uh, uh, nature is so amazing. I mean, she is perfect. She's amazing. And we are headed back toward that blueprint at a really, really fast rate. And that's something that should absolutely be celebrated. So again, uh, stop. I would, I would recommend stopping using the terms that they give you. And this is something that's consciously been part of my life for a long time because it's a habit. You, you get to say, oh God, oh Lord, and all yeah, these yeah. things. Watch that because every time you do that, you're unintentionally calling in them. So if you are, you know, going to use a term, you know, th think in terms and speak in terms of, you know, the true creator of this universe or the source of all things. Leave it as simple as that. And, you know, if you are convinced that one of those other terms is that, then just describe it as the source of all things, you know, and again, the true creator of this universe. Uh, because, again, it's that usurpation and taking on other titles, which kings would do too. If you look back at ancient history, as a king conquered another land, he would take on that king's titles. You know, so you, you take over Saxony and now you are, you know, the lord of Saxony and the lord of, the, you know, this is how they would constantly war back and forth. Um, playing their their risk games, their chess games with human lives, and they still do it to this day. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I just I just forgot to mention um, one really cool thing that Mike was doing last night is when he was looking for books to buy, he was actually going into. Um, the social platforms of the people who wrote the books because he wanted to see what kind of an upbringing did they have is it just a common upbringing am i just reading more of what they are reading or is this person uh, original is this person coming at things from a different angle and you can actually see that in someone's chart you know if they have their rahu in the fourth house you're going to have somebody with a very unusual upbringing <laughs> and i think that's where that's the direction we need to come in from and realize you know it's not bad to buy books we need to learn stuff this is good that's how we filter information but i just thought that was a unique way to find a book is looking at the person who wrote the book and and how were they raised what were they exposed to is it just the rockefeller institute well then what new information are you really bringing to yourself you know and then and then that goes to channeled information can be so valuable yeah you might be missing some information in between the lines but i think you're getting much closer to the truth when when you look to channeled information because somebody is reaching in from their soul yeah and it depends on the channel because if that channel is owned by the system then there That's you go true. and and so you have to use discernment and so this is what i was saying to cindy last night you know i could read their books and I'll, I'll see it right away. There's just these like warning lights that flash and stuff. And there's, you know, I'll, I'll know, I'll just know there's a knowing that comes through. And again, this is where that Gnosticism comes from. It's all about Gnosis, which is knowing it comes from, it doesn't come from the left uh, side of the brain. It comes from somewhere else. It comes from our higher self. It's, it's actually coming down through the densities to give you a, 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 a insight that you wouldn't get if you just trusted blindly anything that you're reading. So I don't trust anything. I read it, and then what do I hear the little voice in the head say? Okay, this person is coming from this point of view. It's so clear. I mean, it's just clear. It, it, but still, it's looking at it, and, and you just immediately see through um, the indoctrination that they're trying to share with you but at the same time you can see some of the nuggets of of truth that's buried in there and again that's all a byproduct of uh, of really having a regular spiritual practice like before we did this i went and did mantras and that's the first thing last night before bed mantras you know so that's that's the root and ground and when every time i'm doing the mantras i'm connecting to fifth density and above and I'm bringing down more of that energy into my being here in my normal waking conscious state. So I'll have that discernment because the system's out to convince you that uh, Satan is God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
That's right. So do yourself a huge favor. Start on a spiritual practice, even if it's only looking at a candle for 60 seconds a day, once in the morning, once at night. And that's going to really help your energy body bloom to a point where you're able to see past all of the BS because we don't want to be trapped in this system. And really, when we're we're taking information from other people, I'm not saying it's bad, but realize they probably got it from the system, which got it from a system, which got it from a system. So how original are we being? I mean, we are supposed to be extremely original, extremely unique, like snowflakes. So if you're really weird, embrace it. You're doing good. Absolutely. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.